Round of applause. Lots of women and children. Welcome to the stage, Tom Horton. <laughs> Are you all well? Yeah. Excellent. Thank you very much for, for having me. My name's Tom. Uh, I'm from a military background. Not personally, but my, uh, my dad is in the military. And it's quite traditional for kids of military fathers to join their father's footsteps into the army. But I think doubts were raised at age seven when my parents were summoned to the foot of the stairs to watch Tom perform his one-man version of Cats the Musical. <laughs> Dressed in a full leotard, ears, whiskers and tail, slinking down the banister going, my cavity's a mystery cat, he's called the hidden paw. <laughs> I remember my dad looking at me with the same expression on his face as a man staring down a toilet bowl trying to figure out just how he'd managed to produce such a remarkably large shit. <laughs> <laughs> and his words, Thomas, today I negotiated a humanitarian peace treaty that resulted in the successful rescue of 157 Afghan refugees. And you're a fucking cat. <laughs> Meow. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love a leotard though, <laughs> and I do. Uh, but uh, my parents are nice. My parents, they ring me religiously the entire time, all the time, and I'm really busy, uh, so I don't check my phone, like ever. I go for weeks not doing the answer messages. I checked it the other day, and I literally had bang, 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 answer phone message after answer message, all from my home, which is fine, but my mum's a serious overthinker, and she jumps to conclusions. So the first, uh, two or, th or three are fine. And the first one just goes, boop. Hi, Tom, it's your mum. I hope you're all well. Just checking up on you. You're, you're not burning the candle at both ends. That you're all well. Give me a call back. Lots of love, mum. Bye. The second one's the same, but just half as long. So, boop. Hi, Tom, it's your mum. Hope you're all well. Give me a call. By the third one, you can really hear the tonal drop in her voice, and everything becomes formalised. Boop. Hello, Thomas. <laughs> this is your mother speaking. You know, it would be nice to hear from you once in a while. If you could give me a call back at your nearest convenience, that'd be very nice, thank you. Cool. After that, the emotions of the answer message follow the five stages of grief someone goes through when mourning a severe loss. So the first one is, is denial, which goes, boop, well, I've been thinking, and you probably just haven't checked your phone yet, have you, Thomas? Yes, that's what it'll be. You haven't checked it. Or I know what it could be. You've run out of credit, so I put some money in your bank, and then you can ring me. Please ring me. Please. Bye. The second one is anger. Boop. This is not the boy we raised you to be, Thomas. You ring me back right away. You are being very, very rude. The next one is the bargaining what-if stage, where you question what you could have done. Boop. Did we not love you enough? <laughs> were we not there for you when you were younger? If we'd bought you the leotard with the diamond encrusted sleeves, would it have been better now? <laughs> the fourth one's depression. Boop, the walls are caving in. I wander lonely as a shell from room to room. What is life worth living without you now? And then the fifth one, does anyone know the fifth one? Except you said that way too quickly, like a depressed man. <laughs> my day's been okay, I'm cutting myself. <laughs> yeah, the, second, the, the last one is acceptance, which is essentially just a fucking eulogy that my mum's left me on my phone. Boop. I know you're not there anymore, Thomas. <laughs> but I just rang to say goodbye. <laughs> Maybe one day we'll be reunited in heaven by the angels. But until then, my aching heart will miss you always. My beautiful, beautiful boy. There's always one final answer phone message right at the very end that goes, boop, Thomas, this is your father. For fuck's sake, <laughs> ring your mother. <laughs> I love, uh, by the way, gigging in front of what is essentially just four shelves of tiny hobgoblins. And I like how the photographer, photographer clearly just went, everyone look to the right and we'll take the photo. And this guy's just gone, no, <laughs> this is my good side. <laughs> my mum, um, <laughs> Improv. Who the fuck does that? <laughs> so, but uh, my mum runs me all the time because she's, uh, she's worried. She's worried because she thinks that I'm lonely. And uh, I'm not lonely. She thinks I'm lonely because I'm not in a relationship. 
but she doesn't get the fact that I'm my age and I just don't want to be in a relationship. I, I, haven't, I, I shouldn't be in a relationship. I haven't even got the necessary tools to be in one. I can't do the, uh, I've only recently uh, learned how to do the, the baby voices that couples do. You two are couples. Do we all know the sickening baby voices that couples do together? It's sort of like, honey, yes, with the pie pie. Well, you know how much I love you. Yes, and I love you too. Yes, I know you do. But could you, could you rub my belly just a little bit here? What's that one there? Well, I've only got one belly. So could you rub it? Okay, I will. You're like, for fuck's sake, guys, we're at Preston Park. Just wait, wait one more fucking stop. <laughs> I... I could never do those baby voices. I tried uh, back in the day with my ex-girlfriend and I'd crawl into bed with her late at night while she was asleep and the lights would be off and I'd tuck myself in and put an arm around her and slowly whisper in her ear, Are you asleep? <laughs> would you like a glass of water? <laughs> I think the closest I ever got was sort of like a drunken sea lion. I love you. Oh no, I love you! <laughs> Baby voices. Can't do them at all. <laughs> uh, people, uh, people say to me in a relationship, it's because you're a commitment phobe. You're a commitment phobe. But um, I'm not comfortable with putting a label on it just yet. I, uh, <laughs> and, it, and, it, and it's not true. I am committed to Tinder. Really committed to that shit. Play Tinder all the time. Give me a cheer if you play Tinder. Play Tinder, like it's a game, but it pretty much is. If you haven't, if you don't know what Tinder is, it's an app that you can upload and it gives you a radius of people and their faces pop up and you swipe right if you would and left if you wouldn't. And it's so much fun because judging people is fun. And um, I've got so caught up with this, I've started doing it in my real life. Like I've started doing it every day, walking around. I call it Wanda and take this with you. Next time you're out on the street, start at the top of the street and walk down. And if you pass someone that you would, you pass them on the right. And if you pass them you wouldn't, you pass them on the left. It's the most fun in the world. I'm like a dog at Crufts, just going in, out, in, out, in, out. You've gotta be careful though if, you, uh, if there's too many triple FAs out there. Do we know triple FAs? Fit from far away. They'll catch you out, because you'll be there going, yes, very much, and then you go, no, 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 bank left, bank left. <laughs> also, if there are too many just general munters around, you will just end up going left, 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 and end up in a Greg's. <laughs> 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 also, if you are going to play it, you can play it as a couple, but if you do play it as a couple, don't hold hands. Because <laughs> if you guys disagree on something, you're going to end up clotheslining some poor six out of ten in the face, and that will not be nice. <laughs> Yeah, no, uh, relationship, commitment, can't do it. Uh, it's, it it's, it's hard. I mean, marriage is definitely the most scary thing to me in the world. Uh, my honest opinion is the key to a happy marriage is in a bowl with a bunch of other keys. <laughs> but um, I did go on a date recently. I went on one. And when I say one, I met up with my ex-girlfriend, but I'm counting that one. And I was meeting her in Starbucks. Uh, we'd, agree, we'd agreed to meet in Starbucks, and I was waiting, and, and she hadn't arrived yet, she was late. And I had to use the facilities, but the boys and the girls were out of order, and so I used the disabled one. And the disabled one's cool. If anything, it's like a luxury toilet, because you can sit down, and there's the full-length mirror right in front of you, so you can pretend you're having a serious business conversation with yourself, with your trousers down. <laughs> Hilarious. And there's the baby-changing tray, which you can put your mocker on, which I did. Relax. All very good, going about my everyday business. But then a middle-aged woman, who was quite clearly in a similar situation to me, she came in, because I realised I'd forgotten to lock the door, but she was in such a rush that she opened the door, turned around, didn't see me, shut the door, and locked herself in with a shitting man. <laughs> I realised in that moment that I had about half a second to come up with the best opening line I've ever come up with in my entire life. So my brain starts rolodexing. I thought, first up, quite easy, just go with the charm offensive. Ha ha! Well, madam, you've quite caught me with my trousers down. <laughs> to the extent, I roll the deck so much, I generally thought of playing a James Bond villain. And as she just turned around, just be there going, aha, I've been expecting you. <laughs> I think that's me stroking the toilet paper for some reason. But I was roller dexing for so long that I didn't actually decide on anything to say. So when she turned around, her eyes clocked me and I clocked her. I went to say something, but it just came out as, <laughs> Bearing in mind, 
We're in a disabled toilet. <laughs> she now thinks I'm a disabled person. To be fair to her, she came up with the best reaction I've ever heard, which was just, Jesus, shit! <laughs> turned, to, turned to run, but in her haste, she'd forgotten that she had locked herself in, tried to open the handle, slam-faced herself into the door, went knocking back, knocked my mocker all over herself, scolding her, me there still going, oh, I've got hair! Her screaming as well, eventually manages to get out and leave the toilet, which fuck knows what that must have looked like from the outside. <laughs> Everyone who had just watched this middle-aged, respectable woman walk into a toilet, shout Jesus shit, and then emerge with brown liquid all over. <laughs> and I was locked in the toilet, just going, right, okay, it's fine. I can relax now, it's okay, it's over. But then I realized it wasn't over, because she's still out there in Starbucks. I can't now just walk out the disabled toilet and go, ha ha, I'm cured! <laughs> Turns out I was just exceptionally backed up the entire time. <laughs> So I realise I've now got to do the biggest, longest, usual suspects Kaiser Sose impression of my entire life and stay in character the entire way out of Starbucks. So I get into it, you know, drop the drop a knee, just do whatever, whatever I can. And I'm getting out of the thing, walking through Starbucks as she's laid down there being fanned by a friend. I'm going, sorry! <laughs> Kept walking past and as I'm exiting, my ex-girlfriend walks in and she sees me straight away and walks up and goes, Tom, oh my God, it's so nice to see you. You look so great after all these years. And I go, it's nice to see you too. And she says, wow, still haven't quite nailed those baby voices yet, have you, Tom? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. I'll pass you back to Tina and Duyev. Have a nice chat.